right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Violin Improvisation 101. Um, my name is Green Buzard, and I'm a violin and viola teacher. I put my the link to my teaching profile on takelessons.com in the chat so that you can um, see take a look at that at any point um, during or after this class today uh, to learn a little bit more about me. And I'm really excited that you all are here to learn about improvising on the violin. Um, improvising on my instrument is one of my favorite ways to express myself through the violin and I'm really excited to share with you some of the ways that I go about doing that. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a few housekeeping things. Um, first of all, if at any point during our class today you have a question, I um, ask you to please submit it through the Q&A. Um, so there's a, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little icon bar that pops up and there should be um, a little button that says Q&A and it has little speech bubbles. Um, and you can put questions that you might have for me uh, there during the class and I will answer them as we go along. And there will also be time at the end for questions. Um, and the other thing is that we also have a chat function on our class today. And um, to begin with, I would love to hear from all of you who are joining us um, what your experience is with improvisation or if you have any initial thoughts or, or questions that you're coming to this class with. Um, so you can go ahead and put those into the chat. I'd love to say hello to, to each of you and um, hear a little bit about what made you interested in this class today. So I'll give you a moment here to do that in the chat. I see someone's already introduced themselves. Okay, yep, just here to learn about it and general knowledge, great. What else, what else brought you to this class today? Cool, somebody else, okay, somebody says they've been learning the violin for a year and eight months, never improvised and sounds like fun. It is fun, I'm glad that that is uh, of interest to you. Anybody else? Yes, okay, would love to learn about how to, to improvise so you can play with friends without preparation. That's really one of the joys of being able to improvise is being able to just pick up your instrument, play on the spot, jam with other people. Um, all right, others have learned violin for a few years, beer and Suzuki, great. Let's get a couple more answers from folks. Ooh, someone plays the Indian violin. Okay, cool. And others have, have a little bit of a violin experience. Okay, great. Well, um, keep those answers coming and I'll visit them as they pop up. Um, I just want to say that even if you've only played the violin, even for just a few months or just a very little amount of time, you can improvise on the violin. I think that oftentimes, um, maybe you see somebody, you know, with a bluegrass group or a fiddle play or something like that, and they're playing, they're improvising and they're playing tons of notes and you're like, ha, how could I ever do this? Um, the key is that, um, well, we're going to talk through a couple different aspects that will improve your capacity to, to improvise. But the most important thing to know is that all you need is a single string on your instrument and a few fingers. And already you are equipped to make up music as you go. Um, so I want to start today to talking, talking about beyond the fact that everybody's equipped to be able to improvise, to talk about kind of what it takes to improvise in a general sense. Then we're going to get into a couple aspects of music theory. For me, in my playing, I grew up playing the piano before the violin and um, really had a strong music theory background. And that has really been important for my violin and improvisational playing because 
um, it allows me to kind of think ahead if I know what key a piece is in and uh, equips me to be able to kind of predict where is the, the harmonic direction of the song going and um, you know sometimes songs surprise you but it is definitely helpful to have some really basic music theory under your belt when you're improvising. Um, next we'll talk a little bit about the difference between melodic and rhythmic improvisation. And then finally we'll talk about a couple ways to practice improvising on your own um, when you're just at home by yourself and then some ideas about how to bring that into other contexts. So just to give a little bit of a picture of my own experience, I play the violin in a lot of different settings. You know, I'm a classically trained violinist and I play in chamber music and orchestral settings and that sort of thing. But um, a lot of my playing ends up being um, in, I play in an indie rock band, I play in like an Americana band, um, I played in you know, everything from folk and bluegrass and country to sacred music settings where I am having to make up what I'm playing as we go along based on like a lead sheet that has chords on it. And so improvising is something I do almost every single day. And it's also something I try to incorporate into my practice. And this is something I wanted to emphasize first is that improvising is something you can do as soon as you pick up your instrument when you're practicing. So sometimes, um, even before I practice the scale, when I practice, I like to just pick up my instrument and see what flows out of me that day. So I'm gonna give an example of that. I'm just gonna make up something on my instrument right now, but I'm gonna just play on the A string. And I wanna demonstrate this to show you that even just with a few fingers that you know how to play, maybe in first position, you can make up music on your instrument. So one moment. All right, let's see what happens today. Here I am on the A string. What, what came out of my fingers today, but I encourage you as a first step to, um, when you're picking up your instrument for the day, pick a string, just stay in first position and figure out what you're feeling like playing. And that's kind of the first point of improvising is that it really needs to come from the heart. It's about feeling, intuition, and about um, kind of tuning into what is the music saying. And that is something that comes with practice and a lot of careful listening. So this leads into my second point, which is that that sensitivity also means that when you're playing with other people and you're improvising, it's really, really important to read the room of what's happening in the music. It, whether it's in a jam session or it's in a band on stage or in some other setting, you wanna make sure that you're not playing in a way that takes over if it's not your turn to solo. Um, and so it's about knowing, should I stay back? Should I play out? And when not to play. And I find actually a lot of the time when I'm improvising um, with in a band setting, um, I, I play less actually. And that actually gives more impact to when I do play. It's just an interesting aspect of improvising and when you might find when you're playing with other people. So, uh, just want to check in. Any other, any questions at this point? All right. Let's go ahead and dig in then into a few aspects of music theory that I find to be incredibly important for my capacity to improvise. Now, um, as you, many of you are probably familiar, 
the major scale, or any scale, but the, we'll talk about the major scale today, consists of eight notes, starting on, like, for instance, G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G again. Um, knowing which key you're in is the first step to being able to improvise in that key because you need to know how many sharps and flats you're dealing with at any point. So um, if I'm playing in the key of G, I know that there's one sharp, and so as I'm navigating and playing around on the fingerboard, I'll know that I only need to play F sharps and not C sharps or D sharps or G sharps. Secondly, there are five essential chords that you should know kind of without having to think about it in each key. Now, the main keys that I think are kind of really important to know off the bat just as you're starting to improvise are, first of all, the keys that are uh, represented by the strings and the violin. So you want to make sure you know all the chords that you need to know in the key of G, D, A, and E. Other useful keys to make sure that you are fam really familiar with are F and C. Now, those five chords that I mentioned are, I'm gonna give you the, the names of them and then we'll talk about what they are. They are the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord, and the five seven chord. Now, that might not make much sense to you if you haven't had much music theory under your belt, but I'm going to hopefully explain it in a way that makes some sense. So each degree of the scale, we assign a number. So if we're in the key of G, G is one, A is two, B is three, and so forth. Uh, a chord that is a one chord is a, is a chord that is built on the first degree of the scale. And so we count up one, three, and five, the first degree, the third degree, and the fifth degree. In G major, this is called the G major triad, the, the one chord, and it would be G, B, and D. This is the bass chord, bass triad for the key of G. And when you're improvising, um, you will mostly, in, in the key of G or any other key, you will be playing a lot around the one chord and you'll be using the notes in the, that chord and not any other notes in between. So for example, um, in a, a song that starts in G and it starts on the one chord, if you're improvising you're not going to be playing A or C even though those are notes in the G major scale, you'll just be playing G, B, and D because Harmonically, that is where um, the song is resting. Now, the other chords that are really important, uh, the four chord, as you can guess, the four chord is built on the fourth degree of the scale. So in G major, that chord would be built on C. And we would count from C, one, three, five, C, E, and G. So if the song moves in a progression from one to four, the measure that the song is in based on the four chord will be in C major. Similarly, the five chord is built on the fifth degree of the scale in the key of G, that is the D major chord, D, F sharp, and A. Um, another important chord is the D major 7 chord. That's D, F sharp, A, and C natural. And the final chord that I think is really, really important to have in your arsenal every time you are improvising to a tune, especially if you don't know the tune and you're just going along and trying to figure it out, you might hear the harmony switch to a minor chord if you're in a major key. And almost 100% of the time, that minor chord is going to be the sixth chord. So in the key of G major, the sixth degree of the scale is E. And uh, if we were to count up 1, 3, 5 from E, the chord would be E, G, and B. And that is an E minor triad. So, um, 
it's important that once you establish what key you're playing in, you do a quick check-in with yourself. And likely, if you're playing any sort of popular music, you will need to have the one, the four, and the five chord. Know what they are and know how to get to them. Um, and then also, check in with yourself. How many sharps are, or flats are in the key that you're playing in? And what, do these no what notes do these chords in a particular key share? Now this last point is really important. The one, the four, and the five chord, you'll notice um, sometimes they share notes and sometimes they don't. So the one and the five chord share the key, uh, share the note of D in the, in the key of G major. So G major triad, G, B, D, the five chord, is D, D, F sharp, A. Um, and this is just important to note because there's sometimes, uh, as we'll see later on, if you're making chords, there's sometimes ways that you can make chords with two notes on the violin that might work for multiple um, chords within a scale. And I'll explain more about that in a little bit. Um, so just to cover a few more items about scales and music theory for the violin, I mentioned some major scales and arpeggios that are really important to familiarize yourself with. Those were A, D, G, E. Those are all of the um, keys that are based on the four strings of the violin. And then I also recommended as you're starting out that you familiarize yourself with C and F. Practice those scales, and you can also start um, practicing arpeggios based on those scales. If you're not familiar, an arpeggio is basically a triad chord, three note chord, that's broken down into its individual notes. So for instance, the one chord in, this, in the key of G, which is a G major triad, if I were to play it as an arpeggio, I'll also, um, while we're here, show you the four chord and the five chord in the key of G. So here's C, the four chord. The five chord is D. And the five seven chord is D seven. the sixth chord is E minor. Um, when you're starting out improvising, as at the beginning of this class I showed you how you could improvise on one string and just see what flows out, you can also pick an arpeggio and see what would happen if I just played around with this arpeggio. Can I make a melody or a tune? For example, Already right there, I'm improvising on a G major triad. So, just to check in, I know this is a lot of information and it might be really, really new to some of you who don't have a lot of music theory under your belt. So I want to just check in. Does anybody have any questions that they want to put in the Q&A? I encourage you to do that as we go along and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, so let's move on to the next item, um, which is about uh, Chords. And I'm just sorry, I'm seeing there's a question. Will we have access to this video later? And I am not sure if it'll be available on the Take Lessons website after. Maybe our co host, um, Maria. Yes, we can follow up after the event, she says. Great. Yes, so there is a possibility to view this content afterwards. All right, so let's talk about another important aspect of improvising, and that is chords. 
So if you're improvising in a group or in a jam session or with a band, um, it's very possible you'll be playing more melodically. Um, and it's also possible you might be needing to play more rhythmically or you maybe just want to pad your sound um, with some double stops or chords. So um, there are, are just myriad ways to make chords on the violin even just in first position. So today we're going to look at um, uh, the chords again for G major and we're going to use this as an example and then I encourage you to explore on your own ways that you can make chords in the keys of A, D, and E as well which as I mentioned are the major keys that are connected to the strings that are on the violin. So if we're in G major we've just talked about the different um, important chords that make up um, sort of any harmonic progression you might encounter um, in most settings. And if you're going to play a chord, you need to make sure that you know, like we mentioned, what notes are in each chord um, that you would need to use. So one, four, five, six, and five, seven. And then you need to figure out what are some different ways I can create a chord based on each of those triads. So let's just start with the one chord, easy peasy, G major, G, B, and D. Now when you're creating a chord on the violin, um, it can be a chord that's based on any two of those three notes. So just because you're in G major and you want to play a chord that would fit into um, a G major harmonic structure, you don't necessarily have to play G. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So I'm going to show you just a few ways you can make a G major chord sound with your instrument. And these will hopefully be helpful for you as you figure out different ways to make up music on your violin. So the first one's really easy. This is just open G and open D. It's the first and the fifth um, notes of the scale and the outer sides of the G major triad. Another way you can make a G major chord in first position is to exclude the G and play an open D and a first finger B on the A string. So you're playing the, the um, third, which is B, and the fifth, which is D. Another way to create a G chord would be, this is a little bit more complicated, um, and if you're just getting into double stops, it might be harder for you but you can play third finger on the D string and first finger on the A string, so G and B. Another one is first finger on the A string B and second finger low on the E string, which is G. Finally, um, you can play second finger on the G string, which is B, and open D. Now, those are all ways to create a G major chord on your instrument. And it's possible, like I said, that in a context where you're improvising, you might be playing melodically and maybe you want to add some extra sound. Um, and just power to what you're playing melodically or as kind of melodic padding. Or it might be that you are um, there to play some rhythm backup. And this is another aspect of improvising. It's really important that, of course, we're able to figure out um, creative ways to put notes one after the other. But the bow hand and the capacity to make variation with your bow hand is a really important aspect of improvisational playing. So you might be doing this with chords or not, but I'm going to show you some different ways to make uh, some very, very variety of sounds with just the bow arm and one chord. So here I am with a G major chord, and I'm going to just give you some examples of different ways you could play rhythmically. <laughs> Kind of endless 
various ways to put notes rhythmically one in front of the other. And that's also something that is important to um, start to experiment with on your own as you're practicing. So if you're picking up your violin and you're going to improvise um, as part of your practice, you know, as I said, play from the heart, see what comes out that day, just mess around with one string or two, um, maybe improvise on some arpeggios, but then also see what happens if I just uh, play with the rhythm. What happens when I play eighth notes and then sixteenth notes? What happens when I vary um, and try to play on the offbeat? Um, and just um, practice making different kinds of rhythm with your bow and not having it be prescribed by anything, but just see what kind of rhythms can you come up with. So, back to chords, I did want to make sure I touched on a few other aspects of chords on the violin that I find to be very important for improvising. The first thing is that all of those chords that I just showed you, um, different versions of G major, you can think about them as, or ways to find them, as the G major triad, G, B, and D, sort of flipped around in different ways. So, for example, here was the G major triad, G, B, D. Um, this chord I played on the A and the E string that was a was a G major chord, B and G, is just like you've taken the G major triad and turned it over once, flipped it so that you're starting on the B instead. And you can do that all the way up the scale. So G, B, B, each chord can get flipped and played in different orders of fingers is another really important thing to start to explore as, you're as you um, begin to improvise because it'll give you some uh, flexibility of mind and fingers so that you don't always have to think about a chord uh, in a particular key starting on the note of that key. So to conclude this section I just wanted to briefly mention Two more things. One is that within any key, so we're our example is in the key of G, you want to do this practice with arpeggios and finding chords for each of those really key important chords that I talked about. So uh, the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, the five seven, and the six chord. Finally, uh, another important thing that I find to be useful about for my improvising is to know different chord shapes. What I mean by that is um, knowing that um, certain shapes of my fingers on the fingerboard create different intervals. And sometimes this can be really helpful if I am struggling to figure out what chord comes next, but I know um, one note in the chord um, knowing the uh, shape that my hand might take is sort of a shortcut so that I don't have to think about what finger, what note it might be. So for example, an important chord shape you might find is a third. Now a third is, a major third is um, two whole steps. And in the key of G, a major third up from G is B, so it's kind of like the first and the third um, degrees of the scale. And there's two different chord shapes for thirds. One is like this, like I just I showed you a little bit ago, like third to first finger. Three different chord shapes actually. So third to first finger. You also might have second to open string. So any any on any string you can make a third, second to open, high two to open string. <laughs> Those are all major thirds. Similarly, three to one is all major thirds. And um, 
You also might find two on high two and or just two and four with two being on the upper string and four being on the lower string. That's another way to make a third shape. Another important shape is fifth. And fifths are easy because the violin strings are in fifths. This is really important if you're ever going to have a drone string while you're improvising. For instance, so fifths can be created with open strings and they can also be created by barring one finger across um, on two strings. So for instance, one to one. The last two that I'll mention um, that I encourage you to explore are fourths and sixths. Fourths can be, that's so that a fourth is from the first to the fourth degree of whatever note you're starting on. So in the key of G, if we're starting on G, a fourth up from G would be C, and we know that because it's also the basis of the four chord. Um, generally, you can make four, you can think about four chords as being um, two shapes that I think of commonly for four chords. One is first finger on a string with an open string below it. I'm sorry, that's a sixth. My apologies. Um, I meant first finger on a string with a second finger below it. The other shape that's common for um, four chords is third finger on one string and a low second finger on the string above it. All right, I jumped ahead of myself there for a minute. So the other aspect um, is sixth, and there are two shapes for six, uh, the sixth interval. So that would be, for instance, from the first degree of the scale to the sixth degree. In the case of G, that would be um, G to E. Um, but whatever note you're starting up, it's you count one, two, three, four, five, six. And the common shapes for six chords are like this. First and second finger are next to each other as neighbors, but on different strings. So here is a B and a G. That's a sixth chord. The other common shape to make a sixth chord is second and third finger together, but on adjacent strings. Okie dokie. So this is a lot of information. I have a few more things I want to share with you before we wrap up today, but I just wanted to check in to see if anybody has any questions they'd like to share with me at this time. All right, as you think of them, please put your questions in the Q&A. I'd love to answer any questions you have at the end of our session today in just a few minutes. So um, let's spend a few minutes talking about music improvisation in different genres. Music improv is going to look really um, and feel really different in different genres just because of the nature of the music. Some musical genres um, require more melodic playing, others require more rhythmic playing. Um, and some, depending on the style you're playing in, you might need to learn different kinds of scales. So for instance, um, jazz requires a lot of different unique scales um, that are really important to have under your belt so that you can uh, play melodically and solo with ease. Um, that's really different than maybe improvising in old time or fiddle music. Um, in that setting, you might have a standard melody that you're playing, but you might be improvising by adding embellishments or um, small variations on the tune. Um, similarly, depending on the setting, and this is something I mentioned towards the beginning, 
um, you might need to vary if you're playing out and playing melodically or if you're sort of adding uh, color. So an example is I play a lot in uh, like a folk rock indie band um, and part of our my job as a violinist in that setting is to add color more than anything else. So more than playing out and playing melodically and getting to solo, it's about um, providing sort of a palette that backs up the songs and um, the words and the guitar playing that's been going on. So I end up playing a lot of beautiful long notes. And that's just, just as much improvising as anything else. I think one of the hardest things to do on a string instrument is play beautiful long notes. And yet it's one of the most important things you can do, um, especially if you're trying to be play with sensitivity. Um, so, and then finally other, as we were just talking about with rhythm and chords, some, some music will require you to improvise more with rhythm and with, with kind of backing sounds that are, are rhythmic. So it's really important to explore um, what kind of, what, what are the requirements of the kind of music you want to improvise to, what does it call for, and to uh, be sensitive to that. Now, I want to leave you today with a few ways to uh, practice improvising, because I think that's one of the hardest things to figure out how to do if you're new to it. The first thing you can do is uh, what I've already described throughout this class today, which is when you pick up your instrument and you've tuned it and you're ready to practice, pick a string and see what happens when you just try to make up a melody for the day um, with just in first position on one string. Then you can start to play with arpeggios. Um, explore, pick a key and explore the one, four, five, and six chord that are part of that key. Maybe try shifting between them. So for example, I'm in the key of G. shift between a G, C, and D arpeggio. That's all I did, and then I made up a nice little song just on the spot. You can do that too. It just takes some time making sure you're familiar with um, what is going on on your fingerboard. So that's another way to practice making up and improvising. Secondly, as you're starting to explore what kind of sounds can I make up on my own instrument, I encourage you to imitate different kinds of music that you hear and listen to. So, for example, um, I, you know, I play, like I mentioned, a lot of um, rock and everything from rock to sacred music to like folk music. And all of those things come into my sort of accent that I have on my own improvisatory playing. Um, including classical music. So sometimes I'll be improvising and I'll be like, I'm just, I feel like playing something that sounds sort of like Mozart or Handel or something classical. I just, you just um, imitate what you hear and know. Start to see if you can make up things on your instrument that sound familiar to you. You can also try to listen to music, and this is a really, really important thing. Listen to music and try to learn by ear what's going on with the melody. So if you have a favorite pop song, see if you can play the melody on the violin. Figuring out how to reproduce what you hear, a melody that you hear, is really key for improv improvising. Um, I want to emphasize that again. Try to learn stuff by ear. That will vastly improve your capacity to improvise because you'll be more, increase your capacity to imitate as well when you do that. Finally, uh, another really great way to practice improvising is to play along with recordings of songs you like. Now that could be reproducing the melody like I just mentioned, 
or it could be trying to hear and figure out what's the harmonic progression that's going on. So, for example, most pop songs, the reason I introduced those, those um, central chords that I talked about, almost any popular song, and I, I mean everything from like pop, like Billie Eilish, to pop, like popular contemporary, like any Willie Nelson song, like everything. The one, the four, and the five chord are hands down going to be what you encounter most of the time. So the more you listen to music and you can identify when chords are changing, you're going to be able to really easily start to hear when you need to switch what chords you're playing on the instrument. One way you can do that is as you're listening, don't try to play the whole chord, just try to play the root note of each chord. So if you're listening to a song and you figure out, okay, it's in the key of G, um, it starts on G, and then you hear something change, oh, it's gone to C. It's gone back to G, then it's gone to D. Just start trying to feel out with your ear and your instrument as you listen and play along, where is the song going? Then when you're familiar with the chord progression and you really can feel it, and know what's happening, then you can start to improvise along with it and maybe make up your own uh, accompaniment. So, just to review, um, today we've talked about improvising as something anybody can do. All you need is first position and a few notes. Um, play from the heart. In context for, with other people, be sensitive to what's going on and what you should be, um, play, if you should be playing out or providing backup. We went through and reviewed a lot of music theory, and I'm sorry if that was a kind of a wall of information. Um, I'm hopeful that this will be available later so you can review it. Um, we talked about music improv improvisation can look different in different genres, and then we talked about a couple different ways to practice improvising. So just to close, uh, two things. If you have any questions, I would love to see them. I'm seeing a couple comments um, about folks wanting to take notes. That's great. Um, and I, yeah, like I said, I, I, I think it'll hopefully be available after this point. Um, two things. If I think Take Lessons will be able to make it available. I will also be putting it on my YouTube channel. You can search that on YouTube. It's just Green Buzard. I'll type my name in here into the chat box so that you can all see that. And then I also wanted to let you know that um, because of this class today, um, if your participant take lessons is offering a discount on, on lessons, um, the code is GET10 and you get 10% off a lesson package. And so I really encourage you all oops, to um, to check out my profile and um, sign up, see if you or would be interested in taking lessons with me. I love working with people of all ages and all skill levels. Um, I have students as young as seven and as old as 75. So, um, and I would be willing to work with someone older than 75 too. So I really um, love to help people learn, love to help people um, explore the violin and the viola and um, really grateful that you all joined me today. So, any pressing questions to end our time together? Okay. If not, thank you all so much for joining me. I, I really hope this class was useful for you. And um, yeah, have a great day.